The bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western theater. Lifting along, singing a song under From Hollywood comes your all-star Western theater. Starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest star today is that great singing cowboy from the Western screen, Tex Ritter, in a story of the West prepared especially for him. Now, here are the Riders of the Purple Sage. A golden sun in the sky, a silver cloud rolling by, they make me feel like I should be where Rocky Roads are calling me. I don't know just where I'm bound, I know I won't settle down Just like a seed, the wild wind so I'll just pack my saddle and my pony, I'll straddle And go riding down the rocky road Seems that I was born to tote a heavy load And ride the rocky road forever But it's down the rocky road where two friends stand And travel hand in hand together A golden sun in the sky, a silver cloud rolling by They make me feel like I should be where rocky roads are calling me. I don't know just where I'm bound. I know I won't settle down just like a seed the wild wind so I'll just pack my saddle and my pony I'll straddle and go riding down the rocky Before the law came to the frontier to stay, our great Southwest was the stamping ground for all sorts of desperate characters. Gunslingers, hold-up men, and cattle rustlers would have wrecked the Old West, but hadn't been for the individual cowpunchers who held the evildoers at bay and made a great contribution to the community. Today, the bakers of Weber's Bread make a great contribution to the community, too. It's a different sort, but equally important, for they bake famous Weber's Bread. The bread that's always good bread. Southern California housewives know that when they serve Weber's bread for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, the entire family will really enjoy its distinctive flavor and longer-lasting freshness. Look for Weber's bread and the blue gingham wrapper next time you go shopping. Buy a loaf and serve it to your family. They'll like it. Now, by special request, the writers of the Purple Sage repeat a song they did a few weeks ago. One of the nation's all-time favorites, To Each His Own. A road must remain with the sun and the rain For its lovely promise won't come true song if the words don't belong and a dream must be a dream for two no good alone to each his own for me there's you if a flame is to grow there must be a glow to open each door, there's a key. I need you, I know. I can't let you go. Your touch means too much to me. Two lips must insist on two more to be kissed, or they'll never know what love can do. I found my own One and only It's guest star time
time at your all-star Western Theater. And today we welcome a return visit from America's great cowboy singing star of Western Pictures and Capitol Records, Tex Ritter. <laughs> our story today, written especially for our guest star, is entitled, I Came from Texas. Tex Ritter is heard as a carefree, fast-drawing, quick-thinking, hard-riding man from Texas. Our scene is the wild, untamed cow town of Spur City, Wyoming, back in the days when a quick draw was law. You know, Pete, a stranger's got a better chance in this town since that Texas feller blowed in and made himself acquainted. You know, being a stranger myself, I know what you mean. Yes, sir, that feller really made him sit up and take notice. Anybody know anything about him? No. And he didn't mean for him to find out either. When anybody asked him where he was from, he just said, I came from Texas. And he said it in such a way that, well, you didn't have a hankering to ask him anything else. You know, it's funny about fellas like him. Nobody knows nothing about him. Blows in, takes over, and then takes out. I wish I'd have known him. He was sure some man. I'll never forget when he first came riding into Spur City. I was sitting down in front of Slick Gillard's saloon when he came a riding in singing a song. Seemed like the most peaceful man in the world. But that was what fooled a lot of people. Diamond, Jack Diamond, and I'm an old you of old. You've robbed my poor pocket of the silver and gold. Whoa, boy, whoa, whoa. Easy. Howdy, stranger. Where can a man put up for the night? Well, they can take care of you in Slick Gaylord's place here. Much obliged. Jack a diamond, Jack a diamond. You've been my downfall. You kick me, you cut me. Name your poison, stranger. I'd be much obliged for the biggest glass of water you serve. Water? Your ears don't lap over. Hmm. I said water. You know, the stuff that falls from up there. I'm thirsty. Oh, water. Well, coming right up. Here you are. I'm much obliged. Fill her up again. You mean you want more of that stuff? How'd you guess? Say, stranger, it ever occurred to you that this farm might be in business for a profit? What business is that of yours? I happen to own the place. Well, that don't quench my thirst a bit. Huh? Much obliged, barkeep. Here's a dollar for you. And it don't go in the register. Much obliged. Look here, stranger. I don't know who you are, but I think you did that for my benefit. You're exactly right, my friend. I don't like your looks. And I don't like your attitude. But I like your place of business. So reckon they'll stick around for a spell. Is that so? Well, I have a special committee of one to welcome fellas like you. Hey, Frenchy! Frenchy Lang! Yes, Slick? Come here. I'd be proud to meet him. What is it, Slick? Show this gentleman out the door. He doesn't like my looks. Huh. Glad to do it, Slick. All right, stranger. Blow. You're getting a little warm, friend. So maybe I'd better fan you. All right, stranger. You're making trouble in the wrong place. You know you that, don't you? reach for that gun you'll wish you hadn't. I ain't reaching. But don't you think you better move on? Well, you ain't asking me nice enough yet. Just who are you and where you're from? None of your business who I am. Come from Texas. Texas, eh? Yeah. That's a state. Hey, barkeep, give me another glass of water. Well, well, how about it, Slick? Oh, I don't think Slick objects. Do you, Slick? Now, look here, Texas. You're looking for trouble, and you came to the right place to find it. Tell you what I'll do, Slick. You don't like me, and my doggone shore don't like you. I'll cut you a high card to see which one gets down on his knees and apologizes to the other. What's the idea? Well, I'm giving you an even break. Because if me and you don't start getting along with each other, one of us is going to get hurt. It ain't going to be me. Hand me a deck of cards, Joe. Here, here you are, Slick. All right, Texas. We cut to see who gets down on their knees. Take a card, Slick. Here it is. Ten of hearts. Not bad. I'll try my luck. 
Jack of diamonds. Now, look here, stranger. You've carried this too far. All right, Slick. Start kneeling. You can't get away with this. I'll bet you my horse and saddle that before I leave here, you're going to kneel down and tell old Texas that you're sorry. And I don't like to be kept waiting. If any of my boys were around here, you wouldn't get by with this. Why don't you wake that one up? I put to sleep a few minutes ago. Maybe he'd like to help. Come on, Slick. You made a deal with me and you're stuck with it. Let him have it, Joe. All right, Slick. I'm through fooling around. Before I get nervous and let this gun go off again, you start carrying out your end of the bargain. Ah. That's fine, fine. Now say, Texas, I'm sorry. Texas, I'm sorry. And from now on, I'll be a good little boy. Now look here. You heard me. And... From now on, I'll be a good little boy. <laughs> That's fine. Now get up off your knees and I'll buy you a drink. You're going to hear from me, stranger. I ain't forgetting this. Yeah, I reckon it will be kind of hard to forget. Just see to it that you make yourself scarce in these parts, you hear me? Slick, I have too much fun with you to want to leave this town. I'll be seeing you later. <laughs> Yes, sir, Pete, he was the doggondest fellow you ever heard tell of. Wasn't afraid of nothing. Then anybody else that had had a run-in with Slick Gaylord like that, it would have just been too bad for him. But this fellow had a charmed way of doing things. The very next afternoon, he was crossing the street, headed towards Slick's place, when old Tom Edwards stopped him. Tom had been having some trouble with Slick. Uh, wonder if I might talk to you a minute. Yes, sir. What's on your mind? I was in Slick Gaylord's place last night, and I just wanted to tell you, I admire a man who can stand up again the likes of him. <laughs> well, he kind of got my hair, so I just figured I'd comb him out. Yeah, it's a shame there ain't more men around here. Don't buck up to him like you do. If I was 20 years younger, he wouldn't be running me around like he's doing. What's he doing to you? I had to lean against my ranch, and he up and decides that he'd like to have my police. So he bought my paper from the bank, and now he's trying to close... Me and my daughter out. How much has he got against you? Four thousand dollars. But I ain't got a chance to raise it till fall. And he's in cahoots with a banker, old Sam Lawson. So it looks like I'm stuck. What's your next move? I'm going to go in and see him now. That's what I was down last night for. But after you left, there's no he was in no condition to talk with anybody. How much time you got to raise this money? Only till tomorrow morning at ten o'clock. Look, Edwards. I don't see Gaylord yet. Just leave him to me. Yeah, but I've got to talk to him, stranger. I know this don't make sense, but if you'll trust me, I'll settle the whole thing and be at your house tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And they won't foreclose on you and your daughter. Well, sir, I don't know why, but I'm going to do what you say. Good. You see, I got an awful bad habit of putting my nose into other people's business. But I kind of enjoy it. Son, I sure hope you can help us. I'll figure it out some way. See you in the morning. Thanks again. So long to you. How you doing, Joe? Oh, it's you again. What do you want? More water? No, Joe. Ain't thirsty today. How's that hole I put through your gun hand last night? Kind of sore like, but look, Texas, I didn't want to draw on you. Forget it, Joe. Where's Slick? Well, he's out on some business today. If you'll take my advice, you won't let him catch you in here. He's carrying enough gunmen around here to start another civil war. Since he had that run in with you. Well, that's good. My trigger finger's kind of itchy. Man, you talk like you're out of your head sometimes. Think I'll sit in on this card game for a spell. Uh, they welcome all comers at that table, especially strangers with money. Well, I'm a stranger, and I'm packing a few dollars, so here goes. Watch him close. Much obliged, Joe. Oh, and by the way... Make me a big pitcher of ice water. I might get thirsty. Well, Pete, I was watching him. He set some game. I could tell the way the boys was figuring on tramming him, but they was being mighty careful about it. Because they'd seen what had happened the night before. But doggone if he didn't have the finest freak of luck I'd ever seen. 
I guess it was luck. At any rate, he was taking them slow but sure. That must have been a sight. Then what happened? Well, the game went on until around 10 o'clock that night. That was when the old Texas boy made his big killing. He dealt a hand of five-card stud. After the last card had been dealt, all three players had caught a jack. The next biggest card up was a ten spot, which old Lang was a holding. That's when the betting really started nursing. All right, Texas. I'll bet you 200. I call and raise two. Beats my hand. Pass. You can't be holding the case, Jack. I'll raise that 500. 500, huh? How much you got in front of you? I got 1,200 left. I'll bet 1,200. Well, I'll call with a pair of tens. What do you got? I ain't looked at my whole card yet. But I got a hunch it's there. Oh, so you're trying to bluff me, huh? I'll let you know in a minute. Turn this little card over and see. A jack of diamonds! Yes, sir, a pair of jacks. Just wait a minute. This looks phony to me. Ordinarily, for a remark like that, I'd shove a deck of cards down your gullet. Oh, yeah? Since you're the heavy loser, I'll just forget it. Then see what you can do about this. There's a dollar, boys. When he wakes up, tell him to have a drink on old Texas. Well, Joe, you better give me another glass of water. I gotta be gone. You got it ready and waiting for you, Texas. Much obliged. Here, here's a hundred bucks. Buy your kids some Christmas toys. But it's it's six months till Christmas, Texas. Uh, then I'll take it back and give it to you then. Oh no, that that's all right. I'll, I'll save it for him. I'll, that's yeah. better. Wonder why Slick ain't been in today. Well, don't know. It must be something mighty important to keep him away this long, though. I'll tell him I'll see him in the morning. All right, Texas, and uh, thanks for the hundred. The kids will sure appreciate it. Oh, don't lie to me, boy. Your kids will never see that money. Well, he is the doggondest doggone feller I ever seen in my whole put together. Yes? I'd like to see Mr. Edwards. Haven't you heard about him? No, what do you mean? He was killed last night. Killed? That's right. His body was found late last night over near the river crossing. Just what did you want to see him about, Texas? Well, I was going to help him on a little business matter this morning. Who is it, Bill? Jane, this is Texas, a friend of your father's. Hello, Texas. Howdy, ma'am. I'm sorry about everything. But I had a talk with your father yesterday afternoon, and I arranged a loan for him. I told him I'd come by this morning. I guess it's too late now. I, I don't know what to do. Well, miss, I hate to have to talk to you at a time like this, but I can help you if you'll tell me what you need. Mr. Gaylord is supposed to be here this morning for his money. You'll find the full amount in this envelope. We'll arrange the loan details later. I, I don't know what this is all about, except to thank you. That's all right, miss. Now tell me. Do you have any idea as to who would have wanted to shoot your father? Oh, he didn't have an enemy in the world. I know it. That is, except his business differences with Slick Gaylor. Uh, that's all I need to know. I'm sorry to have troubled you, ma'am, but I have to be gone. I'll see you again tomorrow. Oh, and thank you so much. You the sheriff? That's right, stranger. What's it for you? Come with me. I'm going to give you a job to do. Well, what are you talking about? I'll take care of everything. I just want you standing by to clean up the mess after I get through. Come on. All right, Gaylord. Start talking. Where were you last night? What are you talking about? Sheriff, what are you doing with this man? Well, I don't know, Slick. He just asked me to come with him. All right, Texas, beat it. We're going to have real trouble if we tangle again. Answer my question. Where were you last night? What do you want to know for? Tom Edwards was shot in the back last night. Yeah, what's that got to do with me? Plenty. Where were you? Well, for your information and the sheriff's, I was over at Rocktown last night. I played cards in my brother's saloon all night. Ain't that right? 
That's right. I was with him. Well, I reckon that clears you of this stranger's acquisition, Slick. And not so fast, Sheriff. Slick, I see you're lying. Now, look here, Texas. You ain't going to get by with that kind of talk this time. That's right, stranger. You can't accuse a man of murder unless you know what you're talking about. And what if I prove what I say is true, that he's lying? Well, uh, that's different, of course. All right, Slick. What do you think of this? You say that you were at your brother's saloon in Rocktown all night. That's right. Then I don't reckon you heard the news. What news? Your brother's saloon burned to the ground yesterday evening about six o'clock. Why, you stand back. I got your cover. You better put that gun down, Slick, because I'm coming in to take it away from you. You better not. I'll shoot. Don't come any further. All right, Sheriff. That's your man. Well, Slick, looks like you're in for it. Texas, I'll get you someday for this. Where you're going after you reach the end of that rope, you won't be bothering anybody. Well, as for you, stranger, you should have told me about these things and let me handle the case. I'm the sheriff here. Well, I'd just like to work things out my own way, sheriff. Well, it looks like you've done it this time. Well, Slick, come on. We'll get that gun hand of yours patched up and head for the county seat. Texas, I was sure thinking for a minute there that you was in trouble, I'm telling you. So did I, Joe. You better give me a glass of water. Yes, sir, he sure pulled a fast one on old Slick. Is that what became of him? Well, it seems as if he kind of got stuck on that Edwards gal. He stayed around about a week, and when anybody wanted him, they knew right where he'd be, out to see that pretty Jane Edwards. I... I wish you wouldn't talk about leaving here. I'd like to stay around, Miss Jane, but I ain't so much on settling down. I wish you were different in that respect. I do, too, Miss Jane, oh, but... Oh, please don't call me Miss Jane. I'm sorry, Miss Jane. I need help on the ranch. Awfully bad. You've got a bunch of good men. And, well, I'd like to stay around, but something tells me not to. What tells you not to? Uh, I don't know. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll cut a deck of cards. Any card from ace to seven means I'll go to work for you. From an eight to a king means, I ride on. I'll get a deck of cards. Oh, I always carry them myself. Here, shuffle them up. This is fun. Unless I lose. I figure I'll lose either way. All right. Cut them. There. Jack of diamonds. Well, he rode away. And believe me, more people than just Miss Jane hated to see him leave. I wonder where he went to. I've been wondering myself, Pete. Funny, but I can just picture him right now riding into some town and singing that song in that carefree manner. Jack of diamond, jack of diamond, none know you of old. You've robbed my poor pocket of the silver and gold. Whoa, whoa, boy. Oh, easy. Howdy, stranger. Where can a man put up for the night? I reckon they can take care of you in my green saloon. Much obliged. Jack a diamond, Jack a diamond. You've been my downfall. Kick me. What'll be your pleasure, stranger? I'd like a big glass of water. Water? Your ears don't lap over. I said water. Thank you, Tex Ritter, for a grand performance. Heard with Tex in our cast today were Joe Forte, Harry Lang, Helen Gerald, Al Sloy, Jimmy Dean, and Johnny Girardi. Tex will be back with you in just a moment. The early West was filled with restless men, forever on the move. They couldn't settle down, these pioneers. They're always riding on, anxious to see what lay beyond the next hill. But they accomplished a lot of good in passing, and they were good friends to the home builders. Today, the bakers of Weber's Bread are good friends to the home builders, too, for by supplying good bread, 
They relieve the modern housewife of her baking chores. And Weber's bread is good bread. Well mixed and well baked. There's a firm, even texture and a distinctive flavor that your entire family will really enjoy. Yes, for breakfast, lunch, in-between snacks, and dinner, Weber's bread is always good. Buy a loaf of Weber's bread at your grocer's next time you go shopping. You'll find that Weber's bread is the bread your family really likes. Now, here is Foy Willing returning to the microphone with our guest star, Tex Ritter. Tex, it was good having you back with us once again. Much obliged, Foy. It's nice keeping company with you boys and all the folks again. Well, Tex, you know, that just about brings us up to song time. Now, don't ask me what I'm going to sing, because you already know. Just tell me when I'm supposed to do it, and I'll sing. Then I'll go home, leave all the folks alone. You know, if the folks had their way about that, Tex, you'd never get home. But right now, we're ready and waiting for you to sing your latest Capitol recording release, When You Leave, Don't Slam the Door. Then crank up your band and I'll give it a try. (laughs) Dishes are piled up in the sink and you've been gone all day. I don't want you anymore Pack your trunk and suitcase and go away from me When you leave Don't slam the door You've had a dozen different guys and always ran around It's my time to two time I'm gonna paint the town I'm a-changing all my way no more traveling day When you leave Don't slam the door If I see you on the street I won't even speak There's no room inside my heart For a liar and a sneak There's nothing more to say Please be on your way When you leave Don't slam the door Twitter. It's been great having you as our guest. The writers of the Purple Sage have a special treat in store for you folks today as they bring you their latest recording release, Divorce Me COD. Just bought me a great long ticket, gonna use it at 4 p.m. So you can call your secret love and break the news to him. You thought your little romance was on the strict QT. If you want your freedom, PDQ, divorce me, COD. I won't be round to hear you cry. I'm Texas bound, and by and by, you can reach me down in Dallas, general delivery. If you want your freedom, PDQ, divorce me, COD. I'll agree there still might be Just as many fish swimming in the sea Keep on fishing and maybe sometime Some poor fish will nibble at your line When he does, I bet you say The best one I had got away There's gonna come a day, gal When you'll be feeling blue You'll find that you can't pay your bills With a little old IOU This dynamite you're playing with May be TNT if you want your freedom, PDQ, divorce me, COD. I won't be round to hear you cry. I'm Texas bound, and by and by, you can reach me down in Dallas, general delivery. If you want your freedom, PDQ, divorce me, COD. Now, babe, there ain't no use to pretty please. Cause I've been learning all my ABC Ain't no college professor, ain't got no PhD If you want your freedom, PDQ, divorce me, COD
Hollywood, you've heard your all-star Western Theater. A V.M. Bear production starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Our guest today has been that great star of the Western screen, Tex Ritter. Next week, another great star in a story of the West. This is Dave Vale speaking. This program came to you from the studios of KNX Columbia Square. Columbia Square. <laughs>